first up today, our next guest is a book club favorite, an award-winning author, a bookstore owner, and you could even add mixologist. Amy Stewart has written nine books, including the bestsellers, The Drunken Botanist and Wicked Plants. Her new work is called Miss Cop Just Won't Quit. It's about a female deputy sheriff, and it's the fourth book in her Cop Sisters series. We're very excited to have Amy back on the Yellow Couch. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. Great Good to, to be have back. You back. Thank you so much for joining us again. So you like these Cop Sisters? I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always wonder with a series like this, and any series, especially with books, rather than movies, I always think it has to do with how much money they make. Maybe uh -huh. it does with books too. I don't know. Um, but how do you figure out when it's going to end? Does it sort of naturally mm -hmm. happen, or do you always kind of go, "Oh, I know I'm." going to have six books in this series, for example. Well, you know, what's different about this one is it's, it's a true story. All this stuff really happened. So I know how it ends because I know what these women's real lives were like and I know how they played out. And so, yeah, I'm trying to write about this 15 year period of time where these three sisters were adults, but living together under one roof, unmarried, and doing some kind of crime fighting or law enforcement or detective work for that whole 15 year period. So, so cool. Yeah. This character in particular that you're writing yes. about here, now she is a deputy sheriff. Right. Um, this was back in 1916. Yes. And this is a true story. Yeah. She was one of the first uh, women deputy sheriffs in the country, and um, she was really unique because she had all the same authority that men had. So she had arrest authority. She carried a gun. She wore a badge. And a lot of women in law enforcement at that time were much more like social workers and were not chasing criminals down in the street. Yeah, and in yeah. fact, in this case, um, there, it, it, much of the plot has to do with transporting mm -hmm. um, a woman to an insane asylum, yes. right? Yeah. right. Yeah, which was the sheriff's job. And so that's an interesting thing about this series is that usually they've already been arrested or convicted. By the time the sheriff gets hold of them, it's kind of done. Yeah. But what, what Constance did in real life is she would realize that there was some injustice, that something's wrong with this case. And because this was long before we had a right to an attorney if we couldn't afford one, you know, women would get locked up with no lawyer, no one to represent them, no possibility of an appeal. And so it's really true that women in law enforcement would take this on and would almost become their advocate in the legal system. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and in this insane asylum, did she have, was she having postpartum or was she in menopause? because that was part of this asylum and why many women were yes, there. Yes, right. Well, and so this is where the fiction comes in, okay. is that I don't always know. I, what I know about this case is that it was her, Constance's job to take her to the asylum. Something was wrong. Mm -hmm. There was a problem. I don't know what the problem was. So yeah, I kind of researched like, well, why did women get locked up? Yes. And so postpartum depression, uh, menopause were very common reasons. And also just- They were not always called those things though. They were definitely they not were called not, those words. They didn't use those words. We did not have those words, yeah. right. Yeah. And then nervous hysteria, which also sometimes just meant exhaustion. You can yeah. imagine you're taking care of five or six kids. You know what housework was like a hundred years ago, right? No dishwasher, no vacuum cleaner. You're yeah. doing everything by hand. You're baking your own bread. I mean, can you imagine what- No Roomba. Day? No, no automatic <laughs> no vacuum room cleaner. Off. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think it's fascinating. What are, what are your thoughts as it relates to politics mm -hmm. back then and now, specifically as it has to do with women? I think about the Me Too movement and some right. of these other things. Right, yeah, because this is just before women got the vote. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the weird things for Constance about being a deputy sheriff is she couldn't vote. So she's operating in a legal system where she does not have full rights and responsibilities. But so did men vote her in to being sheriff? Uh, she's deputy, so she's hired by the sheriff. Gotcha. Yeah, he's elected, but okay. he can hire who he wants. But there was this thing about in order to be a deputy sheriff, you have to be eligible to vote in the county where you live, where you work. So that excludes women. So there was a lot of fighting about that right yeah. at this particular moment. And was there a reason back then that if a man was sheriff, for example, that he'd want to have deputies who are women? I'm wondering specifically as it relates to the transporting mm -hmm. of people in an right. insane, asylum, insane asylum who are women. Yeah, Constance's case was unusual because he really wanted to hire her and he fought for her and he advocated for her and she got a lot of criticism in the media and he mm. really stood by her. For the most part, women were demanding to be let into jails and other institutions for this very reason. Like, we know you have women locked up in there and we know there's only men guarding those. And so, no, police departments and sheriff's offices were not 
thrilled about this, but we're often almost forced to accept a woman or two because of public pressure. Was mm -hmm. this sheriff in the book, I'm interested in him, was he a nice guy or was he interested in Constance? Well, <laughs> he, he was a nice guy. He was married um, and stayed married, mm -hmm. but he and Constance stayed in each other's lives in one way or another for many years. Like okay. Sheriff Heath shows up later. So I know that they had a real bond. Of course, at that time, men and women didn't have friendships like we do now. Right. There was no office husband in those days, yeah. right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm not no sure. No work hubby. Yeah. No work hubby, yeah. Do you dream about these characters? I mean, I you were writing about these cop sisters and these families, and you're doing all this research. Do you yeah. dreams about them? I, I wish I had more dreams about them. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've like, I mean, I've been to the cemetery, I've visited yeah. their graves, and I've, I, I, will, I will go to their graves and think, could y'all just wake up for like five minutes because I have so many questions for you. <laughs> right. So if, yeah, yeah, if you're listening, Cop Sisters, please start haunting me because I really would like to talk to you. <laughs> and we're going to talk about a great event, but real quick, do people need to start from the beginning with this series or can they jump in with Miss Cop Just Won't Quit? Yeah, you don't have to start at the beginning. I write each one so it can stand on its own, mm -hmm. but you'll definitely have the sense of like, I think there's probably more to that story, right? Gotcha. But, but you can move right through it without knowing. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. We want to talk about this event that you have. It's going on tonight at yes. seven o'clock. It's Boswell Book Company on Downer. It is a ticketed event, so make sure you check out information about that at Boswell Book Company so you can go and meet Amy and find out more about her, this wonderful series. So great to see you Thank again. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much Thanks. for your time.